Soldiers of the Republic of Korea. The Republic of South Korea has spent nearly all of its short history at war, sometimes sending its soldiers abroad, but more often than not staring down their northern neighbors on the home front. From its early inception to the modern day, tremendous emphasis has been placed on the military, as the nation's very survival depends on the capabilities of its armed forces. In the aftermath of the Second World War, the Korean Peninsula was divided between the communist-backed North and the Republic of South Korea, supported primarily by the United States. South Korea instituted a defensive constabulary force in 1946, the first military force of the newly created nation. In 1950, the North launched an invasion of the South, leading to the three-year-long Korean War, which saw intervention from a U.S.-led U.N. task force on one side and the Chinese military on the other. After an armistice was signed in 1953, an uneasy peace settled over the peninsula, though both sides of the 38th parallel maintained strong military forces arrayed against each other, a condition that exists even to the present day. In the wake of the conflict, the South Korean military was dependent on subsidies from the United States, as the defense industries were all but non-existent. Because of this, South Korean soldiers would be armed and equipped with American-made gear, usually surplus kit from World War II. The infantry would be equipped with the M1 Garand and M1 Carbine, Browning automatic rifles and other small arms, as well as American-made mortars, M4 Sherman tanks, jeeps, and virtually every other piece of equipment needed for maintaining a fighting force. Uniforms and body armor, in the form of the famous M1 steel helmet, were also provided. Even today, an arsenal of M1 carbines are still in use by reservist forces. In the 1960s, ROK forces were deployed to the conflict in Vietnam, representing the largest foreign force to participate in the conflict other than the United States. The nation had been eager to join the conflict earlier, with President Singh Man Rhee offering support to the French authorities as early as 1954, but this had been rejected. This changed in 1964, when a small force of liaison officers arrived in the country, and in 1965, a division was deployed to the rapidly escalating conflict and were soon joined by others. By 1967, almost 48,000 Korean troops were in Vietnam. These soldiers were once again supplied and equipped by the United States, wearing American-made uniforms, protected by flak jackets, and the M1 steel pot helmet. They would also be equipped with American small arms, including M14s and M16s, and the M60 light machine gun. While deployed in Vietnam, Korean soldiers gained a reputation for effectiveness and skill in combat, perhaps due to their own nation's experience of fighting communist forces. The ROK soldiers fought fiercely against their VC and NVA opponents. Hey guys, I've got some good news for you. We're launching an official Simple History Discord server. You can chat with like-minded folks from all corners of the world, share cool stories you've stumbled upon, and have friendly debates over historical conundrums. And hey, there might even be some special features and other cool stuff in there for you. Check out the link in the description below to join the rest of the friends you didn't know you had. In captured documents, it was found that the Viet Cong leadership warned their men not to engage the Koreans, stating, quote, Contact with the Koreans is to be avoided at all costs unless a victory is 100% certain." Unquote. ROK troops would stay in the country until their withdrawal in March of 1973. By the 1970s, some of the American forces that were stationed in Korea were withdrawn, prompting the ROK government to invest heavily in their own indigenous defense industry. While still maintaining close ties with the United States and basing their military doctrine on their American allies, the South Korean government has sought to become less dependent on outside support. Within a decade, the Korean arms industry grew by leaps and bounds, and by the early 1980s was one of the world's largest arms exporters. Factories produced rifles, machine guns, mortars, artillery pieces, fighting vehicles, tanks, and other pieces of equipment, a portion of which is sold abroad. By 1990, around 70% of the equipment used by South Korea was produced domestically. Today, the Republic maintains a standing military of 550,000 personnel on active service, spread across an Army, Air Force, and Navy with attached Marine Corps. There's also a large reserve element, where all able-bodied men aged 20 to 30 must participate in compulsory military service, the bedrock of a reservist force of 2.7 million. Terms of enlistment last between 21 and 24 months, depending on the branch of service. Women are not subject to national conscription, 
but are allowed to volunteer for service if they want to. Though the ROK Army still makes use of many foreign imports, mostly from the US, but also from the United Kingdom, Israel and Germany, the bulk of the arsenal is from homegrown industries. Even the American-made and designed M16 assault rifles are produced in small amounts domestically under limited licensing agreements. The primary service weapons of the ROK Army are the indigenously produced K1 submachine gun and the K2 assault rifle. The K1 and updated K1A were designed by Daewoo Precision Industries and designed as a replacement for the World War II era M3 grease gun submachine gun. Currently manufactured by ST Motif, this firearm is lightweight, weighing in at 6.3 pounds, with a length of just under 26 inches with the stock collapsed. Though it is classified by the Korean military as a submachine gun, it fires a Remington 233 cartridge, designating it as an assault rifle or carbine outside of Korea. The main service weapon of the ROK, however, is the K2, also designed by Daewoo Precision Industries. First introduced for standard issue in 1984, it was a replacement for the American-made M16A1. Like the M16 it replaced, the K2's action is a gas-operated rotating bolt with a cyclic rate of fire of 750 rounds per minute, with an effective range of around 600 yards. Though South Korea is not a member of NATO, the K2 and its sub-variants fire NATO standard 5.56x45 cartridges from Stenag magazines, usually holding 30 rounds. The rifle weighs 7.2 pounds at a length of 39 inches with a fully extended folding stock. Korean soldiers have used the K2 in combat environments, including operations in Iraq and Afghanistan. For heavier firepower, the ROK Army makes use of the K3 light machine gun. Designed as a replacement for the M60, this weapon is modeled heavily on the FN Mini-Me and the M249 saw. Like the K2, it fires 5.56x45 cartridges from either a standard 30-round box magazine or a 200-round linked belt for sustained firepower. It has a cyclic rate of fire of 900 rounds per minute at a range of 800 meters. The K3 is also much lighter than the M60 it replaced, weighing 15 pounds at a length of 41 inches. In addition to these and other small arms, the ROK Army makes extensive use of vehicles, including the domestically produced K1 and K2 main battle tanks and their sub-variants, K200 and K21 infantry fighting vehicles, as well as various artillery, transport, and air defense platforms. Currently, the ROK Army has around 2,400 tanks, 5,400 artillery pieces, both towed and self-propelled, and 2,800 other armed vehicles. As the primary use of the South Korean military is to defend the nation from a possible attack by their northern rivals, the army is divided into three commands, the first and third of which are designated as a defense against North Korean forces crossing the military demarcation line and the capital city of Seoul. The second command is responsible for protecting the rest of the peninsula and supporting the others. This task also includes guarding the coastline against possible seaborne invasion, as well as infiltration by saboteurs. It is also responsible for preserving manufacturing capabilities and logistics against possible attack, keeping the supply lines open to the front lines. Currently, the ROK still maintains close ties with the United States, the priority being given to defending against North Korean aggression. Both nations continually run joint training exercises, with the aim of increasing cooperation, intelligence, and integration between the two nations. Considering that the North Korean military is over twice the size of their southern counterparts, it is vital that South Korea maintain close relationships. Though their main task is to defend against incursion from North Korea, ROK soldiers have been deployed to battlefields around the world. Apart from their involvement in the conflict in Vietnam, they have also participated in Operation Iraqi Freedom, sending field medics in 2003, and a force of 3,000 Marines, engineers, and special operations soldiers to the country in 2004, the largest deployment of its forces outside of Korea since Vietnam. The South Korean Army has also been deployed to the conflict in Afghanistan, sending medics and engineers to support coalition efforts in the region, followed by other forces. Almost 4,000 Korean soldiers have served in the Afghanistan campaign. During almost the entirety of South Korea's brief history, the nation has placed a strong emphasis on its military. Whether at home or abroad, Korean soldiers have and continue to serve with courage and distinction.